everybody, Jewel back with another super cool astrology video. And I wanted to talk today about people with their natal Venus conjunct to Uranus and what we see when this happens in the natal chart. So Venus is our desires and uh, a lot of what we want. Mars is how we get what we want. And uh, between Venus and Pluto, we see our desires and our deepest repressed hidden desires. And so Venus is very much about um, enjoyment. It describes our love nature, our style of love, and our style of how we want to experience love. And Uranus is that natural ruler of the 11th house. So think friendships, um, inspiration, our social circle, our experience is of, uh, you know, lots of different people. And it's exciting. It's a planet of things that are new, things that are inventive, things that are forward thinking. And so when these two come together in a conjunction, we see them very much melding, meaning that they work together very, very well. So the higher self really, really wanted to learn from the perspective of being someone who impulsively acts upon their desires when you see this one in the chart. This is a really good clue that you chose a chart for a reason because we have somebody that needs to take in as many experiences as they can in one lifetime in order to satisfy their desires. And the desires are what springs from the higher self. So these people tend to be very impulsive and unpredictable when it comes to how they love and how they want to be loved. They need something different, something out of the ordinary or out of the normal often in order to feel fulfilled or like they're truly experiencing love or life because experience and love are very much related in their minds stagnation equals the death of love to them so we tend to see this conjunction associated with more unconventional types of love relationships like polyamory or polyandry, um, homosexual or bisexual relationships, friends with benefits. You see that a lot with this particular conjunction. Um, even dry sexual friendships, uh, friendships that are like, um, you know, where there's flirting and attraction and there is the sexual connection, but there's no actual sex. So you see that too. The people that have this conjunction also, if it falls into certain houses um, or certain signs like Scorpio or Capricorn, they can be very conflicted because Venus in those signs is essentially monogamous. And so their impulses are very much needing to be met within the context of committed or monogamous relationships. So it's how to balance that or how to find a relationship that fits that need. They do exist. We have to get creative and people love to get creative when they have this particular conjunction. So you have to give yourself permission to do that. Again, because you have a soul that is just dying to see it all and feel it all and do it all. So we do tend to see more divorce with this particular conjunction than with most people. Not even so much as with the square or the opposition. We see, actually see more with that. But the conjunction, see, the thing is, is... Um, they can leave relationships very fast and cold because they are focused on the newness or the growth that comes with something new. To stand still in a relationship is, you know, really death to them. And so, you know, they don't handle routine well in love or work. And we'll get to that in a second. 
so typically, you know, relationships do imply something that's very routine. And people with this conjunction don't do well with that. And so we can see more relationships, more relationship breakups, more relationship shakeups. They can unconsciously rattle their relationships in order to make something happen or stir things up. And so we tend to see um, statistically more divorce with most Uranus, Venus aspects. So at work, they really need to be around, allowed to move around and socialize and do something different. They have to change it up. Changing up their environment um, is really key. Having um, a lot to do with different people, they actually do well with customer service where a lot of people you know is going to kill us and make you hate humanity. This is one where they actually enjoy contact with a wide variety of people in one day. So they do tend to do well with human resources types of jobs and things of that nature. So basically, they need unrestricted relationships and routines in order to feel happy or in order to feel like they are being fulfilled or loved in life or being able to love in life. And if you can understand that, then you can understand these people because this is a, actually a very complex conjunction for people who live with someone who has this conjunction to understand. You have to hold people that have this conjunction very lightly. And if you can do that, you will always have them. There is a strong friendship quality that is implied in having this conjunction. And if you can meet that need, if you can be that one that approaches loving them as a friend first, you just may always have them in your life. People that have this conjunction need to be loved in a very progressive manner. It isn't you that they need more. It isn't you. They simply need a lot of experiences in order to feel satisfied. This is their directive in life. And it isn't a comment on you. Sometimes people with this conjunction have to experience things that other people would find socially unacceptable or scandalous. It is part of their nature that these people need to give a voice to those desires that rise up within them. If they do not, they live a life of a nervous wreck and you end up with somebody that ends up exploding on you from time to time because they have no outlet. Their outlet is changeability. It's experience. They are the great explorers in life and in love. And if you can understand that and if you cannot take the way that they approach love personally, then you can have a relationship with them that is very fulfilling. They have a hard time with intimacy, people that have this conjunction. If they can be allowed to experience their true nature, which is different, then they can grow to be able to be intimate with their partners. But so much of the time, they feel like such a freak in love or so disconnected when it comes to the things of their Venus because there is a disconnection when we have this particular conjunction. There's a, a shorting out early in the life that occurred between the things of Venus, which is our values, our love nature, our, our early experience of our mother's femininity and all femininity. There was something shocking or different or something occurred that was very, very often scary. And so 
we had to disconnect, we had to short out from that. And so we need to understand that coming back to that experience, coming back to the idea that doing shocking things or loving in shocking ways or allowing one to be loved in shocking ways brings you back to that connection. So it's an integration that we need to be achieving through experiencing as many experiences as we can fit into one lifetime. So you have to take into account what are your values surrounding your commitment factor to relationships, people that have this conjunction. Because Venus is our values. And we have to be clear about what those are because a lot of times we're not when we have this conjunction because this one implies a certain amount of societal judgment or predilection. Or that's why we have a lot of the um, associations with this particular conjunction. So we have to get clear about what are your values. That will put in that idea of what is your commitment code. Because a lot of times people that have this conjunction are not clear on that. So they'll start out in a relationship where it's, say, monogamous. And then they get kind of restless and need to change it up a little bit. So maybe we start swinging. And then that gets kind of old and you know, maybe we start splitting off and having our own thing. And then you know we're farther and farther and farther apart and then one of us really falls in love with somebody else and then the relationship is over. So when we find ourselves in those kinds of situations, oftentimes there's a lot of regret involved when people have this particular conjunction because, and the other scenario with this conjunction too is that they will leave the relationships very, very rapidly or they'll find somebody else and, you know, have that love spring up in them and that's all they need to leave what they have. And then they'll be really regretful about that. So we see these two different types of scenarios frequently with this particular conjunction. So getting clear on what your values are really goes a long way towards avoiding disaster or putting you in a position where you experience regret. Sometimes regret is a great learning factor. It's part of our lesson. And we find that that's also a part of this particular conjunction. They're learning from that. They are experiencing the consequences of leaving relationships suddenly, creating regretful situations. So they have the opportunity then to see the opposite of what that behavior causes or what that experience causes, which is commitment. So it's really interesting that these people are actually here to experience as many experiences as they can and to have that impulsive, impulsive love nature. But if you look at it more closely, they're really, truly here to learn commitment. And that comes as a result of the behaviors that they exhibit in their relationships. So. This is one that is, uh, you know, require, requires a lot of patience for the people who live with people that have this particular conjunction. But it is uh, a very effervescent and typically extroverted and, and fun conjunction to have. And people that have it, you do want to spend time around them because they're very uplifting in how they make you feel. They're just, uh, they just have this real fun, energetic, childlike quality about them. So it's an interesting one to have.
So I hope you found this helpful. If you did, please subscribe to my channel. You can find me on the internet at truthinaspectastrology.com. You can find me on Facebook at Truth and Aspect Astrology. Yes, I do private consultation. I am mainly a relationship and intimacy, uh, intimacy astrologer, but I interpret all types of charts under the sun. And I'll be back super soon. Bye-bye.